we've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing? You know, um, not not a bad week of college football. Not a bad week of college football. Um, we had a couple good games. Mm -hmm. Um. Not a lot of chaos this week. Not a lot of teams playing this week. Uh, it seems like last week and this week seems to be the popular bye week weeks. Um, Probably next week too. But <laughs> is next? I haven't. I haven't really looked that closely at next week yet. Is next week a little light? Yeah, it's 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 a little light. But uh, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that later. We're, we're talking about week eight. Week eight of our collegiate chaos episode here. So we're gonna. Yeah, we got some games to talk about here, and then we will go to our our rankings board and give out our um our rankings of S A and B tier of teams. So let's let's jump right into it with our uh, noon games. I believe it was the noon games here. Uh, almost almost a almost a an upset to start the day here, <laughs> Clemson and Syracuse, uh, Clemson benching DJ. Yeah. And then coming out the, uh, coming out towards the end of the second half and pulling out the win against, uh, Syracuse 27 to 21 in the battle of the orange teams. Yeah. I went, I don't know if anyone saw it, the sloop picks thumbnail. I went like all orange. That was, that's just what I decided to do. It's like all the orange teams. Cause we had, we had this game. We also had Texas, Oklahoma state. It was a very orange weekend. Um, but yeah, uh, this was a game that once again, it feels like we say this a lot. Clemson could have easily lost. Uh, Dabo did state that DJ was still the starter going forward though. Yeah. And his reasoning was a little odd. I, I don't have the exact quote, but he said something like, yeah, you know, sometimes DJ is just going to miss all of his passes. He didn't say miss all of his passes. He, I said that, but he just sort of shrugged it off. And I don't know. I, I feel like, the the Uyunglele, with all due respect to his little brother, who I hope plays for Ohio State, but I think the Uyunglele uh, experiment at at Clemson should be nearing its end, in in my opinion. It's yeah, he has, yeah there are two teams yeah. that I'm begging them, not not because I necessarily want the teams to do well, but just because I like watching good football. There are two teams that I am like begging them to put in their backup quarterbacks because if you're gonna yeah, it, beat a good opponent like a really good opponent like better than syracuse or minnesota you're gonna need better play from your quarterback mm -hmm. yeah and he had three turnovers in that game one of them you're ahead of me a, matt you're ahead of me yeah one, one one of them one of them ended up being a fumble for a touchdown as well and he, he was he almost caused the team to lose yeah. And it might have if he did not get benched. I I mean it's hard to say, but I kind of think that Clemson loses this game if they don't make the quarterback swap. Mm -hmm. It's it's always yeah. hard to say, but Yep. All right. Um moving on, Jared. Rutgers. Rutgers continues to win here, beating Indiana 24 to 17. Why is this in our rundown? Oh, because there's no the other games to talk about. Because it was a light yeah. weekend of games. Is that why? Yes. Yes. Okay. Jared. That's it. I got nothing else. I got. I got nothing else to say. <laughs> Rutgers is four and three right now. Jared, they are four and three. Who are their losses? Uh, Iowa, Ohio State, and a one point loss to Nebraska. Yeah, you can't lose in Nebraska in the year 2022 and expect any respect from me. Rutgers is almost bowl eligible. You know what, Matt? You're right. You're right. Yes. Number right, three in the it. East, right. That has to still be Penn State. Uh, I if you're would looking, think. No. Yeah, they're they're fifth. They're fifth, buddy. Rutgers is fifth. fifth. Rutgers is, is fifth. Uh, is what, what would be like Ohio State, Michigan tied for first, and then Penn State third. Yep. 
You got it. Yeah. And then Maryland is fourth, which has been a surprise team too, being six and two so far. Very, very surprised. Matt with the chart. Yeah. Right, um, um, apparent. Yeah. Maryland's three and two in conference. Rutgers is one and three in conference. Yes. Yeah, it's one thing you have to keep in mind. You have to look at the conference record, not the overall record, when you're talking about positions within the Big Ten. Yes. All right, uh, next game, Jared. Cincinnati narrowly escapes SMU 29-27. to 27. This, this is who Cincinnati is this year. They, you know, we talked a lot in the Monday episode about, like, the difference between teams like Ohio State and teams like Iowa, which often has a lot more to do with depth than it does your starting 22. Yeah. Um, And Cincinnati, and we talked about how Iowa sometimes needs to rebuild because they don't have that kind of depth. So some years they'll be good and some years they won't be. And in the case of Iowa, they're both simultaneously amazing on the defensive side of the ball. And one of the worst teams I've ever seen on the offensive side of the ball. Uh, Cincinnati had great players last year, they have left and they are not the type of team that has the type of depth to be a playoff team multiple years in a row. And so mm-hmm. Cincinnati in a, in a year in which they should be bad, they're still ranked. And yeah, they, they only win two over SMU. That's fine. Uh, Cincinnati's yeah, they, they playing did. Cincinnati's playing with house money. As far as I'm concerned, this is not yeah, a year they, where they should be this good. They're doing great. Yeah, they near. Yeah, you're right. They did nearly permit a comeback. Yeah, uh, SMU did score two touchdowns late in the fourth and failed that two point conversion at the end. But you look at um, Cincinnati's last scores here. Uh, let's see. Towards the end of the second quarter, field goal. Third quarter, field goal. Field goal. Field goal. Not not getting to the end zone much in in this game. They got. They ended up kicking. Was that three, four, five field goals in this game here? Yeah, uh, they, Matt they, could says, easily, they could have easily lost this game. Matt says it is the American Conference, though. Yes, yeah. but they also have the resources of an American Conference team. So that goes both ways. It, it, there's a reason why, and I'm not saying like, I mean, like, okay, in, in this case, if Ohio State wants one of your guys, they're going to steal one of your guys even if you were a big 12 team, I mean, see Oklahoma state, but like their coaches are just there for the picking for anyone who wants them from one of the big boy conferences. And they'll be in the big 12 next year for what that's worth, but they're not getting like that big 12 money yet. Not that the big 12 money is all that great, but Perry Eliano too. Yeah. That's who, that's who I was talking about gangland. Um, Big 12 is power five AAC. So UC will be good. Yeah. uh, UC say that again, big 12 is the power five AAC. So UC will be good. Yeah. Okay. I got it the second time, Zach. Um, Fick to Nebraska. I don't think Fick would take that job. Yep. I don't think so either. Uh, Speaking of games that need to talk about games here. uh, Miami losing to Duke, Jared. Uh, pe- people were ready to put Miami as a potential contender for the ACC this year, and yeah, no, definitely not. They they're now three and four for for the year, and coming off a forty five to twenty one loss to the Blue Devils. England says, referring to Fick, I don't think he'd want to leave Ohio. I think he would leave Ohio but not that far. I think he knows that his strength is recruiting in Ohio. And I could, I don't see him leaving Ohio or a state that borders Ohio. I think it would be very interesting if, for example, um, the Marcus Freeman experiment doesn't work out at Notre Dame. I think that's a interesting name. I would I would watch and I think it would also be interesting to see what happens if Penn State decides to move on from James Franklin. Mm-hmm. Yep. I think that would be another interesting destination potentially for him. 
Is they the college football equivalent of Andy Reid? That feels like a pretty solid comparison, actually. I had never considered that before. That that seems to make a lot of sense. All right, uh, Wake Forest, Jared. Wake Forest continues to win here. This is this is a team that we don't talk a lot about. I know they they had that near victory against Clemson a few weeks ago, but they they still keep on winning games here. They beat Boston College handily, forty three to fifteen. Do we need to take Wake Forest seriously? Oh, uh, I mean, define seriously. Um, As a contender? A contender for... that That's... Complete that sentence, is what I'm asking. <laughs> if a, you're going to uh, say the playoffs, the, no. Um, ACC. Yes. Yes. Um, they would... They're in the same... I, I can never keep the Atlantic and Coastal... Well, figured they, out they are, in my head. they are in the same they are in the same um division as clemson and syracuse uh, and they've already lost to clemson yes they did yep yeah so maybe not because like, clemson would have to lose two in order yep. for them to get back into the conversation and that is tough yeah and looking at clemson uh well not not an easy road uh clemson does play notre dame but that doesn't count it's not a conference game. That's that's true. That would um, not help Wake Forest. So the only so the only they only have two conference games left. They only have two, and that's Louisville and Miami. Yeah, uh, no, they're Wake Forest is done. Sorry, Wake Forest. Yep. All right, moving on here, Jared. Uh, another game, Jared. Battle of the Orange. Oklahoma yeah. State and Texas. Uh yeah, this was a this was such Oklahoma a big State 12 wins game. 41 to 34. It was a hell of a game, Matt. It's such a big 12 game. Uh yeah. Uh Texas, as it turns out, not back. No. Um man, like something about Quinn Ewers, and I know like we're talking to primarily an Ohio state audience. And I know that people have a lot of feelings regarding Quinn years. I get it. Um, he at times looks amazing, but at other times looks like he f- needs to throw the ball as hard as possible all the time. Um, he's not there yet. He's not there yet. Uh, we, we do have to keep in mind that, you know, he missed a bunch of time. I, this was, Kyle, is this his third start? Is anyone confirm that for me? Yeah. I th- it's I think only it his is. third start. Yeah. Because he, he played against Bama, got hurt, and then just came back, uh, not this week against Oklahoma State, but the week prior, right? Did he play? Did he play? Did they play a week prior to was was Bama and Texas week two? I forget. It doesn't matter. He only has like three or four starts. He did play. He did play against Oklahoma. OK. But you understand my so, point, like he's not he he should be a freshman in college right now that his age should be a freshman in college right now. He only has a few starts under his belt. There is a lot of people like burying Quinn Ewers. Just slow, slow down on that. He's obviously incredibly talented. I think he needs to get his finesse game down. I think he needs to get his mental game down. Um, and, but, and, you know, some guys will figure that out and some guys won't. But but he's not there yet. Yeah. That was a hell of a comeback though by Oklahoma state. And yeah, yeah, it, it was a fantastic game. Uh, I don't know about that. It was a fun game. All right. All right. Listen, Big 12, Big 12 games are a lot like watching like uh, like Transformers movies or other like big special effects heavy movies. They're not good movies, but they're a lot of fun. And that's that's how I feel about most Big 12 games. <laughs> All right. How do you how do you feel about this uh, next game here, Jared? UCLA and Oregon. 
uh, Oregon just coming out of the gates, just just on fire, scoring 28 points in that second quarter to beat uh, UCLA eventually 45 to 30. Um, my first thought not- was good job on UCLA for at least coming back. Uh, cause I, I, I went to bed at one point and I think Oregon was beating UCLA much worse at that time. So yeah, halftime was 31 to 13. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's about when I checked out. Uh, so I guess good job. <laughs> good job. Good job. on at least making it look, uh, decent UCLA. Um, no, that's not right. They played at three 30. What game am I thinking about? What game did I check out on? Um, was it uh, Washington? That's that's the game I was. Washington. I was. It was the Washington game. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, no, I, I did. I did check out on Oregon UCLA, but it was just because there were other uh, better games on the three thirty spot. Mm-hmm. That's that's it. There are other more competitive games on. All right. Yeah. I. Well, not now. There are no undefeated teams in the Pac-12 now. Now your leader is Oregon, who got smashed by Georgia in Week One, and it, that's probably a good thing they played <laughs> played them in Week One. And maybe it doesn't mean as much as it, it as it might have been. But we'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge. We'll cross that bridge when it comes. Though it's hard because they didn't just lose. Yeah, they got smashed. Yeah. And if and if any Buckeye fans remember, when you get smashed in a game, you know, people remember. Yeah. Uh speaking of smashing, LSU smashes <laughs> Ole Miss 45 to 20. Here is your team chaos moment, team chaos game for the week. Probably your only true team chaos um, of the week, unfortunately. Um, But yeah, LSU started the season garbage. Like seriously, one of the worst uh, LSU teams I had seen in a long time. Um, and, And now they're like, they're figuring stuff out. So LSU in September, garbage fire. We're getting to the, like the late stage of, of October and they're, they're, they're pretty decent. Um, I, n- I never was like an Ole Miss believer. I get the Ole Miss is just the latest of teams that are, you know, ranked in the bottom half of the big or of the top 10 to just eventually lose. Cause there aren't 10 top 10 teams this year, which is a thing we've said a thousand times this year. Like there's not a good like upper middle class of college football right now. You have the rich teams, you have a bunch of middle class teams, but there is not a good like upper middle class of, of college football right now. It just doesn't exist. Um, and yeah. Ole Miss was just one of those teams that got into the top 10 by default, much like Penn state before they got smashed by uh, Michigan and like so many other teams we've seen in the seven, eighth, ninth spot, just get, run out of the out of the top 10 we just saw ucla get run out of the top 10 you know what i mean like we will continue to see this this year uh seven to ten could easily lose to 20 to 25 any given saturday 100 percent matt 100 percent. absolutely yeah now Jaden daniel is like he's i still don't good quarterback he's he's a good quarterback i just I still have a hard time um, trying to pinpoint him because he runs so much as yeah. well, which is, which I mean, it's definitely helped him out. I um, mean, he has, what is it here? Nine touchdowns on the ground. He's thrown for 12 and only has one pick for the year. And, and in this game, he had 121 rushing yards. Are we still uh, in an era of college football in which a – running quarterback can win you a national title. Like a run first quarterback can still win you a national title. Only, I think only, only if you have the defense that can help help out too, because I mean, that's, that was, I I, I think yes, under the right circumstances. I, yes. 
And but on top of that, what also like doesn't help is that he's not built like Cam Newton or Tim Tebow. He's yeah, he's no, not he's... built like a fullback. So oh, can only, can a guy two, like this pounds? He's only two hundred pounds. Can a guy like this run as much as he ran for an entire season? in modern college football versus, you know, even like 2007, 2008, you know, I feel like we, we had like a prime era of like, you know, for decades in college football where you can go win a national championship with a run first quarterback. But I don't think we're in that era anymore. Uh, go, go, Get you to the natty, yes, but win one, but not win one, but not win one. Yeah, I think it can get you to the playoffs. Well, I think you can get to the playoffs with a run first quarterback, especially if you're in the Pac-12 or Big 12, um, ACC maybe even. But I think you have to have a pass first quarterback to win a national title in the era of college football we are currently in. That's my yep. thought. Is LSU, did, or did they get ranked off of that? Are they in the AP top 10 now? Of course. Or true. not top 10, not top 10, top 25. No, they're not. I'm surprised. Not, I just, yeah, I just misspoke. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, they got the SEC bias. By the way, I think LSU should be in the top 25. I don't think it's difficult I, to get into the top 25. I'm more upset. If we want to talk about SEC bias in the polls, Let's talk about the fact that South Carolina beat an awful Texas A&M school and got put in the top 25 for it. Yes. All right. Um, moving on. That's here. far Alabama. more egregious than LSU making into the top 25. Yeah. Um, sticking to the SEC here, uh, Mississippi State uh, played Alabama in the wrong weekend here. And Spe just... Speaking of top 25 SEC schools that shouldn't have been a top 25 SEC school, Mississippi State got smashed again smashed. they got smashed yeah yeah their they, their six points was a total junk time touchdown yeah and and yeah bread as time expired yeah it was 30 nothing with one second left <laughs> yeah but yeah just yeah like i said it was the wrong weekend to play alabama here and yeah alabama just showing yeah they they still have a really good defense here offense still needs some need to still figure some things out here, but still, still a very, very good team here. And uh, both Alabama and LSU get the week off in week nine here, and they get to play each other in week 10. That, that should, that should be a fun one to watch. Yes, sir. All right. Um, moving back to the big 10 here, Penn state and their yearly wideout out uh, defeat the golden gophers 45 to 17. Minnesota was not ready for that whiteout. Um, Penn State looked good in this game. Uh, we, we do need to point out that this is Minnesota without their quarterback, Tanner Morgan. And this was a thing we talked about on Collegiate Chaos. Uh, it's a thing we've talked about on here before. I think we were talking about it on the Sloot Picks. Most teams, we again, we talk about the, what's the difference between a place like Minnesota and a place like Ohio State. Both teams can put really talented squads on the field. But injuries. You know, still having fresh legs in the fourth quarter. These things require depth. Um, if you're Minnesota, you, you can't lose your quarterback. You can't lose your running back. You can't lose your quarterback, who are some of the best players on your team and continue to compete. Um, yep. Minnesota without their quarterback with Ibrahim still trying his best, but I don't think he's quite him, uh, coming back from an injury. He's still, he's still good. Don't get me wrong, but, um, just, just not there. And by the way, uh, one, one thing I need to mention about this game that should have been mentioned during the salute picks, uh, this is a beautiful bald game. Both, <laughs> both coaches under the lights head shiny beautiful bald game yeah and he, he had 30 rushes for 102 yards and that's yes Gage. that's all uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, all, that's all penn state had to do was was just load up in the box and 
and prevent prevent them from running the ball. And that's what they did. They Minnesota only averaged 3.6 yards in that game, and that, that's what they needed to do. By the the bald bowl, um, get, we we were watching it a bit during the uh, Sloopcast social screen, which is a an event in the Discord server where we get together and we watch one of the windows. Uh, one of the three windows, we get together in the Discord server, watch some college football together. Um, Gangland and Austin uh, both told me I had to mention the bald bowl during Collegiate Chaos. Uh, so, duty, uh, yes. I, w- words, I don't know. Yep. Fulfilled? Uh, game- Fulfilled, yeah. is that? Okay, whatever. Move forward, Jared. Or, in yeah, the last Jared game here, T- TCU duty. beating Kansas State 38 to 28. This is another great game. Kansas State looked like they were going to win for a long time. TCU with a comeback ends up with a fairly decisive looking victory. Um, Kansas State loses one quarterback. Second quarterback comes in, doesn't look bad. Uh, he got landed on. Hard by one of TCU's, uh, I think it was a defensive end. I don't remember. Um, he left for a drive or two, came back, but when he came back, he was never quite the same. Um, yeah. TCU, by the way, has heard a lot of quarterbacks this year, which is probably a thing to keep an eye on. Yeah. And I'm not saying right. they're dirty or they're doing it on purpose. It's just, it's a thing that's yeah, happening. Yeah. All right, Jared, let's pull, let's pull up our graph here. We're going we're gonna to rank the teams here. Uh, so for those that are listening uh, in our podcast, we will do our best to try to explain what we are showing visually to our YouTubers here. So in week seven, week seven here, our S tier, so our top four teams, Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee, and Michigan. And then in A tier, we have TCU, Clemson, UCLA, and Alabama. And then B team, B tier, we had, we had a, good fair amount of teams in b tier which will be um will be changing up here so let's let's go with the s tier here jared s tier i do not think you need to touch it at all you keep it how it is yeah ohio state uh with a decisive win uh did i think georgia had the week off uh tennessee played a directional tennessee uh, Michigan had the week off. Um, Austin has uh, appeared from nowhere to advocate for TCU being in the S tier. Well, no, let's let's talk about that, Jerry. Let's talk let's about talk. it. All right. So let me. I am going to pull up the games here. Uh, do 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 do. Here we go. Michigan's Michigan's best win, or I'm just going to go in order their wins. All right, starting from the top here or bottom. Michigan has played Colorado State, Hawaii, Yukon, Maryland, Iowa, Indiana, and their best win, Penn State. All right. A, d- a very decisive win against Penn State, it should be said. Very decisive. All right. And TCU played. Hold on, hold on. Tennessee. I want to include Tennessee in this conversation. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, let me pull up Tennessee. All right. So Tennessee's wins, Ball State. Pitt, who was ranked at the time, Akron, Florida, who was ranked at the time, LSU, who was ranked at, at the time, Alabama, who was ranked at the time, and UT Martin, who was Alabama's Alabama's still ranked. Let's be an LSU uh once again ranked. Um so let's 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 forget about the at the times. They beat Alabama, they beat LSU. LSU was worse back then, I'll say, than they I think than they currently are. Um God, I know most I, for Austin, I get that it's but but I think for everyone else, it's mostly for the meme. But the chat is pushing hard for TCU right now. Mm-hmm. I know. All right. And and the TCU here, TCU has Colorado. Tarleton. Yeah. Tarleton. Uh, SMU. Oklahoma, who was the first team. No, the second team to uh, obliterate Oklahoma. Uh, Kansas, Oklahoma State, and now Kansas State. That's and again at the time when they were all ranked there, they were 
those last four games, they were all ranked. So who would you say? Okay, is it fair to say, is it fair to say that Tennessee has two good quality, like legitimately good quality wins, at least? Mm -hmm. The TCU has two really good quality wins, at least. And that Michigan only has one? Yeah, I think so. Is that enough to, to make a swap? You're welcome, Austin. Yes, let us swap Michigan and TCU. Let's, let's Georgia get, doesn't either, color. though. Uh, let's, let's, and and let's, I know you don't want to hear this, but like Georgia passes the eye test. Here, here, let's 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 swap them. Let's swap Michigan and TCU here. Convince an Ohio State podcast to to bump down Michigan. Good job. <laughs> All right. So Ohio State, then Georgia, then Tennessee and TCU are our top four. And then and then a tier, I think I think Michigan right there at fifth. I'd, I'd be perfectly fine with, with them being um, with the first team right on that bubble in the fifth. And then I, I guess Clemson can go there. They're undefeated. And, they're gonna, they're in the driver's seat for the ACC championship. Um, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's, it's the last, it, those are your six teams, last six undefeated teams. So yeah, that that's fine. And then you you still got you still got to put Alabama there because uh, they 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 can still run with it and end up getting to the um, conference championship and then winning and then getting their way back into the playoffs. So absolutely, they'd be in the A tier as well. And uh, I've gone ahead and just moved UCLA down just just so we have like a clean S tier and A tier. And I think this is this is I would also say is our order, right, Kyle? Ohio State one, Georgia two, Tennessee three, TCU four, Michigan five, Clemson six, Alabama seven. So, so let, let's let's review A and B tier, Jared. What what would you classify as an A tier team? I think you have to be. I, I think first and foremost, like if you're undefeated is a, is a good and then like if you have a loss it needs to be a real good loss a real good loss okay like so a let's, like let's, a qual a real qual, like alabama for example lost to who we consider the third best team and they lost close they lost at a game winning field goal that's right, a right. that's a good opponent on a last second play all right could you say the same thing about Oklahoma State? Let's have a conversation about it. Oklahoma State had a three-point loss, hey, just like just like Alabama did, uh -huh. uh, to TCU, which, oh, hey, hey TCU is now in our S tier as well, too. And they just and beat they, a they, Texas and, team who I legitimately think is not as bad as their record, excuse me, shows. I, I think yeah, Texas and, and they, has upside to yeah, them. You know, yeah, and Oklahoma State has some good wins as well, too. I mean, they they convincingly beat Baylor. Um, they came back to beat Texas just this last weekend. I I really like this Oklahoma State team, and I would, I'd, I'd be fine putting them in that last spot in the A tier. Perfectly okay. fine with it. Well, I just want to say that A tier is not limited to four. Like S tier, if anyone's new here, S tier, we say has to be four teams. That's like our playoff prediction it has to be four teams a tier we don't have a we don't have a hard set number so and, and i th and i think on that cusp of the a tier i'd be fine keeping them at b tier but on that cusp and it's hard hard really hard for me to put them in the a tier because of what happened in week one but oregon's really looking good Oregon's yeah. looking really good but if I, you have one loss it has to be a good loss and quite frankly it wasn't it was against a really good team but you got shellacked mm -hmm. yeah all right. Um, so B tier. Yeah, we mentioned Oregon. Yep, Oregon stays exactly where they're at. Ole Miss. Uh, I That's think their, it's their one loss. It 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 is. It is. It, um, they, they did they did get run off the field though. But so did, did Oregon. I I think putting so Ole Miss. Okay. Um. Maybe we can just move them all the way to the right on the B tier. Uh, Syracuse. I think I we're think, showing a little bit of recency bias. 
It, to have oh, 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 Oregon there's, all there's, the way to the left. Reason. Okay. All there's, right, a, all right. there's a reason for my madness. I'm just going through the teams real quick here. Uh, Syracuse um, should have, could have, would have, but I think you still keep them in the B tier still. It's their first loss. Is it? Uh, okay. Okay. It's their first it's their loss. first loss still. Okay. Uh, Kansas State, it is their second loss. I it think, is. I think you put Kansas State on that left side there of um, outside of the B tier there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll come back. Maybe we'll come back to them, but not, not for this week, um, for week eight tier list. Um, Wake Forest, keep Wake Forest where they're at there. Uh, South USC, keep where they're at. Illinois keeps, keeps winning, or maybe they didn't play. I don't remember, but Illinois only has one loss. USC there. did not play. Yeah. Uh, Utah has a second loss, but I think they've, been looking pretty good so i think we keep utah because of their um recent win over usc so i think you keep utah there and we're not just uh, just, just for the record we are not ordering b tier no. b tier is not so, in an order so i think who you need to add back up in here i think you need to put even though they got stomped um two weeks ago i think you put penn state back up in the b tier it's their they only have one loss they only have one loss, and I think I think they belong in the B tier somewhere. So uh, Buckeye Matt is asking, um, wasn't the same kind of loss, but Oregon season, if they win out, be equivalent to Ohio State in 2014. Like if they lost to unranked Virginia Tech, neutral site, one team, do they get the same benefit of the doubt? No. The With Virginia Ohio State lost Ohio State lost by what fourteen points and how many how many points did uh, Oregon lose to against Georgia? Not as many as Georgia could have put up if they wanted to. Like it was just never a contest. Um, and and uh, more, more, I think more with that, that team we saw we saw with or or with Ohio State and Virginia Tech we saw a team that was flawed in specific ways and that's why they lost and then we watched them as the year went on fix those flaws um Oregon on the other hand was just non-competitive you could also make like oh well Virginia Tech wasn't that good so um Ohio State maybe just got caught sleeping like you don't even get like the caught sleeping excuse with Georgia you just got demolished. And I honestly don't think there's coming back from that. And mm -hmm. also just might depend upon like, who is there to pick from? Yes, but in my mind, a blowout last number one team at a neutral site is equivalent to losing to an unranked team by two scores at home. I, I, I disagree. Yeah, I, there's, I disagree as well. I, I think everyone knows that attrition <laughs> is a thing. And sometimes you just get caught points. sleeping playing an inferior opponent. Like sometimes that just happens. That's college football. This was a, yeah, I just, a game in Atlanta is a home game for Georgia. This is also a good point. That's it true. was, it was a neutral so, site. So I think it's fair. I think what we have here, as far as that B tier, I, I put Penn state back up there. I think, I think putting Penn state up there is, um, just so we can put them back down them still. Just yeah, so we can would, put them back put down them next the, week. Yeah, I'd put. Yeah, but <laughs> at least at least up for for right now. Uh, Kentucky has multiple losses, so we're not we're not going to put Kentucky. I think the only other one loss teams, Jared, that I see here would be Cincinnati, UNC, and Tulane, which I do not care to put them up there. Does anyone want to make a case for UNC? And I mean, like, literally, Kyle, do you want to make a case for UNC? Does anyone in the chat want to make a case for UNC? I'm getting, I'm getting, I'm getting no's. I got a no from Kyle. I got a no from Gangland. Um, Your bet, UNC's best win is Miami. Oh, God. Or, or Appy State. Oh, God. Maybe Duke. Oh, God. Maybe yeah, Virginia no. Tech. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, so I'm fine with wow. this. So, and 
So are you, are you good with this here, Jared, what we have listed? S tier, S tier, we have Ohio State, Georgia, Tennessee, TCU. A tier, we have Michigan, Clemson, Alabama, Oklahoma State. Yeah, Duke did smoke Miami. <laughs> and then the B tier, we have Oregon, no order, Oregon, Wake Forest, uh, USC, Utah, Illinois, Penn State, UCLA, Ole Miss, and Syracuse. I think I'm going to take LSU. Yeah, move, move them over to and keep I'm just an gonna yes. just going to put them over here. Um, we're not going to do anything with them yet. We're just going to move them over there. Um, I think, I think maybe that's it. That's um, it. yeah. I, does I anyone agree. in the chat, does anyone in the chat see anything we should take a second look at? Um, is there, is there anyone we should drop to M tier? I feel like we've neglected M tier for a bit. Um, not, not really, not really. I haven't really seen any bad losses. Uh, this last week, so I'm. I probably would say no. I would say no to to dropping anybody down to M tier. Uh, yeah. Maybe, well, oh, oh, Miami, Miami, Mississippi Miami, State Miami. can go to M tier. Miami's already down there. Um, yeah. and, uh, see, Mississippi State in Northwestern for M tier. I like for me the quintessential M tier is Texas A and M. Like you had to have been, there had to have been like expectations that you missed. So it's, it's, it's not like just like, Oh, Colorado sucks. Toss Colorado down there. You know what I mean? Like there has to be missed expectations to make it to M tier. Like you have to be like sort of hiding your face in shame as opposed to, yeah, we were going to suck this year. Oh, there, there's, there's somebody who should be hiding their face in shame that, uh, that had te Texas A&M making the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he also had Pitt. He also had Pitt. Yeah. Um, but no, J no, no, Jerry, I don't, I don't think so. Not, not this, not this week. Let me ask you a question. Total theoretical. Okay. okay. If Penn State gets obliterated by Ohio State next week. Which they're a 19 point uh, underdog. If Ohio State wins by 30. 28. Ohio, why, why, why would you? 28 or 30? Four, touchdown, four touchdowns. Okay. 28. Yes. Do we M tier them? Uh, let me see. Who do they play next? Hold on. Let me look. Let Does me it look. matter? We get blown uh, out twice in the same year. I was looking to see if they can redeem themselves and uh, no, they can't. I, you I go from a top 10 team to like two blowouts over the course of three games. That's M tier shit right there. Mm -hmm. other, other than going on the road to play Auburn, there are no other quality wins that Penn State would have because their final games would be whoa, Indiana. Whoa, 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 whoa. I will not allow you to call Auburn a uh, quality win. But it's it's tough going on the road in the SEC, Jared. Shut up. Because <laughs> their final games is Indiana, Maryland, Rutgers, and Michigan State. I just now changed it to week eight. Be proud of yeah, me. Yeah, I kind of hinted that at that twice. <laughs> well, don't don't hint at it. Point it out to me as if I am an idiot. <laughs> All right. No, I'm I'm happy with I'm happy with this um, rankings here. Uh, but yeah, uh, looking forward to uh, um, our next episode Thursday, where we will be talking about Know Your Enemy, Penn State, in a not finally a non uh, whiteout game <laughs> on the road to Happy Valley, where Ohio State is currently a 19 point victory. And then we will talk about ever about the uh, other games on Friday's episode, which doesn't look all that much better than this last weekend. If I'm being honest, I think there's only th three. Yeah. I think there's three ranked on ranked uh, games this weekend, Jared. I mean, this weekend, State this weekend wasn't bad. You had Clemson in a close call. You had two um, top 10 teams lose. And, you know, granted, like, I think we kind of, kind of were, to. One of, yeah, one of them had to, and I think we were kind of looking for Ole Miss to lose. 
Um, yeah, that's true. That's true. So the, the, the three ranked teams, Ohio State, Penn State, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, and uh, Kentucky and Tennessee. Okay. Well, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> when was the last Ohio State at, important, at Penn State game that wasn't the whiteout game, and then we can't count 2020? For because there there was no one in attendance. Um, I know when the last time Ohio State lost to Penn State, that wasn't a uh, a whiteout. I don't know if that was the last time. That's a good question, though. I'm not sure. I know the last time Ohio State lost to Penn State at a non whiteout was 2001. Interesting. All right. Um, I don't know. 2018 was a non whiteout day game. Oh, there you go. I didn't think it was that recent, but okay. I'm going to trust Zach because I'm not going to. Yes. I'm not going to take the time to look it up to, to prove him wrong. Yes. It was a 3.30 right. start, he says. Well, what? when was that? Because like in November, a 3.30 game is kind of a night game. That, 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 <laughs> That was that was in 2018, Jared. Uh, well, yeah, that's a non-whiteout game. Wait a minute. He says, uh, Gangland says uh, that was at the shoe. So yeah, that wasn't the whiteout. Yeah, the... No, Even... 2018, 2018 was a whiteout game. Okay, guys, we're all very confused. So mm -hmm. I think it's. Either way, we'll, we'll, we'll talk 17 about was a blackout. Again, I'm not, we're not worried about what happened at Ohio Stadium, guys. <laughs> we're talking about at Penn State. <sighs> we're going to end the episode now and uh, yes. let this be a mystery that's solved on a, this is a cliffhanger. This is a cliffhanger. Or it might be a cliffhanger. Depends upon if you remember to uh, pay it off later. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We won't. Um, we have confused the host. Well, because that's Zach. I trusted you. And and then then it all went to shit. We're, we're moving forward. Um, yes. Oh, hold on. Buckeye Matt showing up with receipts. Um. What's, what's, what is this? I'm seeing a lot of teams on here that aren't Ohio State and Penn. We're moving forward. We're done here. We're done here. We're ending this episode. Um, check out the sloopcast.com. It's essentially a, I, 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 hold on, hold on. We're, they, they, they deserve punished. They deserve punished. We're going back to this screen and then I'm going to take this, this Buckeye Huddle logo. And then I'm going to cover the chat because they deserve to be punished. The chat deserves to be punished. Okay. Um, uh, everyone check out Buckeye Huddle. We're now affiliated with Buckeye Huddle. So that's fun. Well, welcome. Welcome to my heel turn, gangland. Welcome to my heel turn. Um. So that's fun. We're at Buckeye Huddle now. Um, you can, uh, you can uh, visit our uh, sloopcast.com page, which is linked to all of our other stuff, including our t-shirt stores. We have multiple t-shirt stores. You can find links to all of our social media pages on there. Um, you can join our Discord server. Uh, we have a Discord server. I had a, someone pay me a wonderful compliment in the Discord, not not to me, but to the server. Um, where he kind of brought a bit of a conspiracy theory that he heard elsewhere to our attention. And I just sort of said, no, that doesn't make sense. And here's why. And a couple other people were also sort of chiming in and he goes, thanks. This is the most rational. <laughs> this is the most rational uh, Ohio state fandom I can find. Thank you. That, that is what we are aiming for in the discord server. So that's 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 my advertisement for the Discord server. Um, Kyle, that's it. That's all the plugs I feel like doing. Do you have anything in um, 
in in Kyle's corner for this week? Kind of like last week, there hasn't been really much much news other than um, I think the blue jackets are doing well. Jaron, you want to talk hockey? Not especially because <laughs> I, I have I I have nothing about uh, <laughs> about the blue jackets except they're winning, except they've been winning recently. Kind of. I took I took the chat out of timeout. <laughs> we want Tony uh, and Tom. <laughs> They're the next door down. All right, nope. I I got nothing, Jared. I got nothing. Let's 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 end this uh, shenanigans. Yeah, we we have slipped into shenanigans for sure. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a Columbus band called Room and Board. The a Columbus band called Room Ampersand Board. So. With all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Uh, once again, this is Room and Board. Mm-hmm.